We are approaching the end of the week. Some boring weather in our part of Texas. You can see that on the visible satellite imagery. Cumulus streets coming in from the south-southwest, but if we run the animation, you can see that sea breeze working very aggressively inland. That's a push of cool air from the coastal regions, reinforced by some of this convection, and we can take a closer look at that. Or maybe not. I couldn't find a sector that's right over Beaumont. However, you can see the start of that sea breeze right there, and watch that work inland through the morning into the afternoon. You can see those anvils really shearing out there due to some northerly flow aloft, contrasting with southerly flow in the low levels. Let's grab a sounding and see what that looks like. There it is, kind of a lengthened photograph right there. And a lot of that strong wind aloft is way up at 200 millibars. So we're looking at 34 to 45,000 feet with those north winds. But down below it, weak mid-level winds and some light southerly flow in the low levels. The surface map at this hour is showing that sea breeze moving into Texas, Louisiana, and the Gulf Coast, a larger complex of storms in northern Florida, and a large MCS working through Illinois. Got a weak frontal system coming through the Corn Belt. There it is right there. Some strong north winds sweeping into Kansas. The tail end of that other polar front that came through the Great Lakes, it's uh, running through about Quebec and Ontario. And other than that, not a whole lot going on at the synoptic scale across the country. We can see the flow of tropical air right there. Lots of 70s dew points, and that goes all the way up to this convective complex where we have dew points in the low 70s. And checking on things out in the western U.S., it is pretty mild. 98 at Phoenix, 90 at Las Vegas with thunderstorms, and it looks like a lot of thunderstorm activity through the Elko and Cedar City area. We have 80s out in the high deserts of Oregon and Washington, and of course we're expecting those areas to get very hot this weekend. In fact, we've even got 93 if we go a little bit further to the north. And a check of things up in Canada and Alaska. 977 millibar low right there near Coral Harbor. Pretty active pattern, but we do have that polar vortex still going even in the month of June. And up in the Northwest Territories, let me move that weather map so you can see that better. We have 82 degrees at Inuvik and 84, 82, all down the Mackenzie River. So some hot weather, but that is not near record temperatures. Inuvik right there, their record is 91 for all time. So we're not really within 10 degrees of that. Well, 9 degrees. Elsewhere, things running pretty cool on the North Slope and in the Canadian High Arctic, temperatures in the 30s and 40s. That's about where we expect to see it around this time of year. In the tropics, very little going on. This disturbance near the Windward Islands, not expected to come together. However, this one has a 50-50 shot. That could bring it into the Caribbean maybe about a week from now. We'll just have to keep an eye on that. The Storm Prediction Center has an enhanced risk for northern Kansas along Interstate 70 up into northern Missouri. And they've got a tornado watch out in effect for that part of Kansas adjoining Nebraska. Here's what we have at the time we're recording this. A couple of good, looks like hailstorms, possibly. And we have a couple of severe thunderstorm warnings with those. There's the animation. Storms appear to be moving towards the east. And we'll check them out real quick for rotation. These are not really shown much in terms of the velocity field. If we give this another 30 to 45 minutes, we should start seeing some of those circulations come together. The National Weather Service does have a few advisories, watches, and warnings out for heat. 
We've got one heat advisory right there in northern Oklahoma for very high heat indexes. And then we've got this heat warning through much of Oregon, Idaho, and Washington with heat advisories and heat watches in effect. Here's what the GFS late afternoon temperatures look like for tomorrow. And I have cautioned you that some of the extreme values that it's reporting are likely in error. They've got 92 for tomorrow. And then for Saturday, looking at 105 there, that's probably overdoing it a bit. And then we go into Sunday, and you probably remember we were seeing values of around 121. Well, that's backed off to 114. And for Monday, 102. So that shows you the problems with the GFS. It has some sort of feedback thing going on with the physics packages. I don't really know the exact cause. I'm sure they're going to be looking at that because this has been a very frequent problem. And in fact, if you go into next week, there's Monday and then there's Tuesday. You can see it's bringing it up to 119 around Pasco and even up to 118 and yeah it's got a 120 right there we know that that's probably bogus and who knows what the cause is but we can rest assured that it's probably going to be hot there maybe close to 100 maybe a little bit above that there's certainly that indication and likewise some hot weather expected in the Snake River Valley and Northern California next week so this could be kind of a long running heat wave. This is one product worth looking at. It's the National Blend of Models Guidance. Now, this is not one deterministic model. It's a mix of different models with some probabilistic indications. We're looking at Portland here. This is the guidance from earlier today. And the forecast, for example, for Sunday evening, that's going to be in this column right there, Monday at 00, 00 UTC. And they've got a median value of 110 there from all the different guidance packages. And they've got a most likely high of 110. And that's certainly trended down from what we've seen over the past couple of days. And very likely that's going to settle in maybe right at 108 or 109, I would think. And you can see the range of possible values anywhere from 117 down to 106. Those are going to be the outliers. The official forecast for Sunday going for 109 there at Portland with 109 at Yakima. That's going to break the all-time record for Portland for sure. And for Seattle, 102 there. That's quite hot, but that does not break their all-time record. And then for Monday, Weather Service is expecting a bit of a cool down. However, Yakima coming in at 111. We have not talked much about the Northeast U.S. because it's been pretty quiet and cool every day. You can see that the highs today, upper 70s, but they are expecting a heat wave this weekend. Friday, warming up to high 70s, low 80s. Cranking up the heat to the mid 80s in some areas, 85 for New York City and 88 for Washington, D.C. And then for Sunday... Coming up to 88 at New York City and 90 in Philadelphia. Definitely at its worst on Monday. Lots of low 90s all the way up to Boston where they have 91. And then things start cooling down around Tuesday and Wednesday. Okay, let's take a break from the heat and focus on the tropical moisture. There's the frontal zone right there in the Midwest. And you can see the precipitable water. That's kind of a measure of the total moisture through the column focused on that moisture axis from the Gulf up into Missouri. Those are going to be one and a half inch precipitable water amounts in purple. Going into the weekend. Yep, there's that moisture flowing on up into Michigan coming up to two inch precipitable waters in that region. So a very good chance of heavy rain in parts of the Midwest. That moisture just keeps on coming. Here comes another slug into Texas for Sunday. And the moisture is going to be so abundant that it should start infiltrating into Arizona. 
and give them some monsoon conditions. And with that much moisture coming into Texas, we may see some rain breaking out down there as well. And the moisture keeps on coming and even surging out into Florida and the rest of the Gulf Coast. So it could be kind of a wet period through much of the southern U.S. up into the Midwest over the next week. And you can see Arizona there getting one to one and a half inch precipitable water. Looks like some of that extending all the way up into the Los Angeles area. Kind of resembles a little bit of a late season pattern. And then we can see some cold air coming down. This is going to be a dry air mass working southward and pushing that moisture back out into the Gulf. So that shuts down the party for the central U.S., but down on the Gulf Coast, that precip and sea breeze activity should persist. In western Wisconsin, we have a frontal boundary and a low pressure area. And when we animate the satellite, you can see that come together very rapidly. There it is right there. Cumulonimbus tower coming together and quite an anvil on that storm. Now the updrafts, those are going to be located right in here, especially where you see that overshooting top. In fact, it looks like maybe there's two of them. There's one and there's another. That's going to correlate with some of the most severe weather. And a lot of the rain will be falling down in this area here. Checking in on those storms in Nebraska, starting out, they did look a little bit discreet. And running that forward, there they go. They kind of merge into a large cluster. That looks like a right mover right there through the Aurora area. You can see that tracking a little bit east-southeast. The tail end storm not really doing very much at this hour. The weaker convection out to the east, that kind of died off and left us with the stronger cells. And then we have this other cell out there just southeast of Lincoln. That looks a little bit disorganized at this hour, but of course that bears monitoring. And an update on that sea breeze that's surging north. If you want to know what that looks like, well, here have a look. This was taken about five minutes ago. Looking to the south, not much to look at really. A few towers trying to go up, but it doesn't look like most of them are going to make it. Anyway, that's all I've got for this edition of Forecast Lab. Hope you all have a great evening. Take care, and we will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.